He burst onto the scene as Australian rugby's Kid Dynamite and made his test debut before playing a super rugby game back in 2002 against England. Matt Gitto had played 92 tests up to 2011, including two World Cups. And Matt Gitto strolls across and scores the Wallabies' third try. But he was dropped by Robbie Deans for the 2011 World Cup. This saw him head to France and he quickly became a fixture in the star-studded Toulon side. He won Player of the Year in the French Top 14 and suddenly was back on the Wallabies' radar. They changed the rules so he could come back. And Matt Gitto joins us now on Rugby HQ. Well, we've waited four years to say it. Welcome back to Australian Rugby and welcome to Rugby HQ. Thank you. It's good uh, to be here. You have always said that, uh, you know, if the call came, you would answer the call, but you never really thought it was going to come. What, what's the last couple of months been like knowing that uh, you might be back in the setup? Well, it's very similar, I think, to, uh, to what I thought. I never thought I'd, I'd have this opportunity again. So for me, it feels like the very first time that I was called into the Wallabies. You know, it's, uh, it's an amazing feeling. You're obviously very proud to be back with this group. And uh, it's a tremendous group. The guys have made me feel very welcome, very quickly. Training's been tough, intense, but yeah, it's great to be back. Hey, um, you always look after yourself and still do physically really well. How, what about the standard of play you've been at in France? How are you fitting in all right? Yeah, well, I think the, it's obviously very different. If you watch the Super, the Super 15 final, that game was quick. My, I had a, my heartbeat was through the roof then because I knew I'm coming back to possibly experiencing that level. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a very different style of rugby over there. You know, I've, I think it's more tactical kicking, uh, more playing percentages, building pressure, trying to get points on that way, whereas here it's attack from everywhere. And at training, uh, Czech does a lot of uh, physical contact. You don't do so much in France. No, no, that's been a bit, that's been a bit tough. I hope yeah. <laughs> Drew Mitchell was whinging. Yeah, oh, well, that's a first. He doesn't win much. But, he, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been very tough. You know, obviously, on the body, it's, it takes uh, a bit of adjusting, but it's good. I wouldn't want to come in and just be eased into it. You know, we, we either cope with it or we can't. So, you know, that's the best way to go. Gitch, you've always been a good team man. You, what do you hope to bring to this team in particular? What, what, what can you really add? Obviously, you can play the game, we know that, but what else do you think that you can do? Well, I boost the numbers as far as, it, as the age goes. <laughs> yeah, so obviously second eldest here behind Wycliffe. Um, oh, look, I just, I'm not sure what, what I can bring. You what know, about your experience from well, France? Well, possibly I can. So, you know, everything that I've learnt, um, whatever I've got within me, I'll, I'll be giving everything to the group. Yeah. You know, whether I'm starting, I'm, I'm on the bench, whether I'm just holding pads. You know, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy just to come back, help the group, whichever way I can, as long as we can achieve some success and achieve something, I'm happy, whether I'm playing or not. But, yeah, I'll try and add as much as I can to the group. Has Cenk lent on you for any tactical information about some of the English and Welsh players who you've been playing against in the last four years? No, no, no we haven't really had any of that. Obviously, the, the first uh, test is again against South Africa. You know, I've got no, not a great deal of, of history behind me. You know, for four years I haven't experienced playing the Springboks. Um, so... You know, I think when the time comes, possibly I'll have some advice for him, uh, if I'm there, obviously. 10 or 12? I think my best position is 12. Uh, that's where I, I you know, from the experience going away, um, when I left, I probably thought that I could play 10, but after playing outside Johnny Wilkinson and, and you know, a couple of other guys over in Toulon, I, I realised that I'd probably add the best value to the team at, at inside centre. The way you're talking, there is an element of the unknown for you. Like, you, you, in your heart, do you still, or do you really know whether you can cut it still? Or, or is that a voyage of discovery for you as well? Well, that's, I think that's what the nervous energy is about. You know, at training, I'm there, I'm, I'm probably at a level a bit higher than the rest of the boys. Just because it feels like it's your first time that you're back in Wallaby camp. And you know, you're nervous, you're trying to catch every pass, every pass needs to be good. Um, little details like that, you, you know, so it, who knows? You know, I'm looking forward to it though, when I get my opportunity, because I'm sure in these first four tests I'm going to get an opportunity. Um, and then I'll know. Once I know, if, if I'm up to it, you know, I'd love to stay and hang around. But if I'm not up to it, and if I know deep within myself that I'm not at that level anymore, you know, I'm not going to waste anyone's time and I'll move on. Is there any lingering bitterness over Robbie ditching you in 2011? No, I mean, I've, I've thought about it a lot and I think it probably warranted that. He picked the, the squad that he thought would win um, and I wasn't included. You know, I thought at the time, you know, I deserved to be there and I had every right to be there, but I probably didn't. I wasn't playing well enough. Um, 
you know, and having said that, he picks the squad that he thinks he's going to win. He's not going to pick a side that he thinks, oh, gee, I just don't like this player in there. It, you know, so I think I was bitter at the time, but I had no right to be. So, no, I'm, I've moved on. Is your game better now? I mean, sometimes, and I remember going playing in the UK, you learn new stuff and you're learning all the time. You've played with some tremendous rugby players in Toulon. Is your game improved from where you, where you were in 2011? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. As far as um, knowing the right times, when to attack, looking at different opportunities, um, identifying moments in the game. I actually don't know if the actual skill level has improved a great deal or if I can step better, run better or do different things. But I think my decision making has gotten a lot better. Game just sense. with timing. Yeah, well, your game sense. You're knowing you know, when your team's under the pump, what you need. Yeah. Um, especially in those big games, you know, when the pressure comes. So I think, hopefully, if I'm involved, that's something that I can bring to the group. You've handled all of that. We'll see how you handle this. Skits hasn't had the pleasure of the Fast Five before. This is your chance to ask the questions. Fast Five, brought to you by Han Superdry 3.5. And the questions have been coming uh, thick and fast for Matt Gitto. The first one gets, uh, which player in the Wallaby squad are you most looking forward to playing with at the Rugby World Cup? It's the fast five. Yeah, You've got to be a little bit quicker with the answers, mate. But that's OK. You've got to get the answers to the questions first. <laughs> I, look, I just want to be involved. I'm oh. a team man. <laughs> Correct answer. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Second one, um, what did you miss most while playing at Toulon? Probably on the weekends, having a bet and a beer with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Very good. Um, if you couldn't play rugby union, what would be your next career choice? I would have been a PE teacher. I studied that two years. Uh, I've still got two to go. You, yeah, you'll finish that at some stage, I'm of course. I'm sure I'll get, I'll yeah. get through that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, being Buddy Franklin's brother-in-law, could he make the switch to rugby? No. No, he couldn't. <laughs> Why? I just, I think he's too weak-minded. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'll go well. Yeah. <laughs> See you at Christmas. Excellent. Yeah. All right. And uh, finally, um, oh, oh, this one from uh, a youngster called Matt Tamua, M Tamua. Um, why did you have to come back and take my spot? Matt <laughs> wants to know. I don't know about that. I'll be holding his pad, I think. Mate, thank you very much for, uh, nice. for joining us tonight. Um, we've all wondered and uh, still wondering. We certainly hope that you can cut it back in the Wallabies when you get your chance.